right, guys, there she goes. We'll return shortly. Um, I finally got a hold of somebody in the sales department that went back to the service department and they came back and informed me there is a fire in the service department and that is why nobody is answering. Nobody was answering the phones because the fire department was putting out a fire and everybody had been evacuated from the building. What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction BMW i3 Problems. I'm just kidding. I'm really not all that upset about it. So here we have the 2018 BMW i3 still under factory warranty. And I had an issue coming from Copart the other day. First time I've had a real, well, okay, second time. <laughs> let me, let me fix that second time. First time we had a real problem with this was when the range extender failed to fire up for us when we were coming out of Flagstaff going to Needles, California. Um, that was kind of a big deal, but we were able to clear the codes manually and we were able to get where we were going. So catastrophe averted. Now yesterday I was on my way from Copart doing a walk around video coming home when the power steering failed. Now, some of you may have seen that on an Instagram post. Uh, power steering completely quit. The interesting thing is there were no codes. I didn't have any warnings, no error messages flashing, but the steering was very heavy in comparison to what it normally is. And it would pull itself to one direction. For me, it was pulling pretty hard to the left and the steering sometimes would be a, a tad jerky. It would kind of like pull itself one direction or another. And I was like, no, nah, uh, uh. So I called BMW roadside assistance today. I also called the BMW dealership, Jackie, Jackie Cooper, BMW in Edmond, and they're on their way. A total of about 45 minutes, not bad from calling them. They're on their way. They'll be here within a half an hour. They're going to pick it up. They're going to tow it because they said that they didn't recommend driving it in its current state. So they're going to come pick it up and uh, they've got the appointment already scheduled. They're going to diagnose it. They seem to think it's going to be a fairly quick and easy problem that's covered under factory warranty, of course. It's got uh, 28,000 miles on it now. I bought it with 24,000 miles. So we've put a... Uh, we put a little bit of mileage on this girl, and so far, I'm very happy with the car. In fact, I find myself driving this car more than I drive anything else. I don't drive the truck. I don't drive the Jeep. I'm still learning how to ride the motorcycle, but this has become my go-to car. This is my daily driver. I really enjoy it, and am I upset that we're having a problem with it? Not at all. It, it's not about, you know, Weston Champlin said something in a, a recent video. He said, it's not the problem. It's how you resolve the problem that he cares about. When he was having an issue, uh, I believe it was at the Dodge dealership or something like that. Or no, it was that engine that he had uh, custom built. He said, you know, problems happen, accidents happen. It's not about that. It's how how the business responds to and resolves the issue the customer is having. And so far, BMW has been very, very helpful. They have offered to pick me up and give me a ride there or even deliver the car back to me if necessary. So uh, we'll follow this as it continues and uh, we'll see what happens, man. Hopefully this doesn't take but a day or two. It's uh, the 31st of March right now. So we'll see how long it takes for them to get the car back to me. And then I'll come back and share my experience dealing with uh, Jackie Cooper BMW service department and the BMW warranty basically all around. I remember this car has an extended warranty. I have the factory BMW warranty. I also have an extended warranty that cost me 2,200 bucks. Well worth it. So just a quick update. It's been about four or five days since I dropped off the BMW i3 or should I say since they picked up the BMW i3 from my house. And uh, I called yesterday just to see what was going on. They told me that it was gonna be a simple software update. It was really no big deal. I found TSBs relating to that. And uh, that's exactly what they came up with. They said there's an updated software version that needs to be installed. And uh, well, I decided to give them a call and find out, hey, am I gonna be able to get the car back? Because the i3 was scheduled to go into uh, the AutoSpot LLC for paint correction and coating. That was yesterday. It didn't make it. When I called, I couldn't get a hold of anybody, and that had me very concerned. Um, I finally got a hold of somebody in the sales department that went back to the service department, and they came back and informed me there is a fire 
in the service department and that is why nobody is answering. Nobody was answering the phones because the fire department was putting out a fire and everybody had been evacuated from the building. So at this very moment, I have no idea the extent of the damage. Um, if my car was involved, could it have been my car that started the fire? I have no clue. Nobody can tell me anything. Uh, all I know is that there was a fire. The fire department's there putting it out and everyone in the service department was evacuated. So uh, stay tuned and we'll find out if my I-3 survived. All right, guys, so we're back because we got some news from the BMW dealership. You guys have been waiting a long time for this video, I know. Um, they did give me a call. They said we can come up there, so let's go up there and talk to them and see what's going on. We got Santa's workshop in the garage. His name is Michael. Yeah, but that's right. Michael, Mike, or what you said. How did you say that? In Michael, life? Mike, I don't care what you call me as long as you call me to dinner. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Go check out Santa's workshop, guys, because he's working. Well, by the time this video comes out, I don't know what exactly he'll be working on. Uh, God, my, my last video was my 98 Mustang. Next video coming out uh, the next week is going to be my next project. You're going to have to show up to find out what it's going to be. But so subscribe is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. And it's going to be a long-term project. It's going to take a while. Okay. So, um... Yeah, I'll be pulling it out of the barn, washing it up, getting it in the shop, seeing if it'll run for the first time in oh, about five years. I love those types of videos. Those are some of my favorite. Yeah. Some of my favorite. Well, guys, <laughs> go subscribe to his channel. I'm already subscribed, so I'm definitely going to be watching to see what he pulls out of the shop there. Yeah, I'm gonna, I want to get it started. It's the original engine, but that's going to be coming out, and I'm going to be putting in something special. A Hellcat engine. Well, not quite, but... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm seeing something over here on my fence. Is that a dead bird? What the... I don't know. I think it is. Oh, no. No? Oh, it's a trash bag. It's, <laughs> it's a trash bag. Okay, I see. I, saw, I thought that was his tail feathers sticking yeah. out. You know, I was like, oh, no, man, a bird got stuck in well, the when, fence. When you said that, that, that's what was showing up in my mind, too. Yeah, okay, okay. Ugh. Well, today we're going we're gonna to hop in the, the I, if I haven't said it before, and I have, I'm going to say it again, I hate this car. I really hate this. Damn it. This, uh, this little Beamer yeah. here. The little Beamer is, it's exactly that. It's little. It's uncomfortable for me. I, I am not comfortable in this car at all. And it's locked, of course. To me, it kind of reminds me of getting in and out of my uh, of my old Corvette. <sighs> Come on, and you have to keep pushing the damn unlock button for it to unlock. I'm just not impressed with this car. Uh, but I appreciate, I definitely appreciate the dealership giving it to me. I mean, it's a brand spanking new BMW 330 uh, XI. Definitely appreciate it. Um, no offense there, Jackie Cooper, at all. I mean, uh, I do appreciate you giving me the car, but seriously, like, it's just, uh, it's very unimpressive to me. And I love my little i3. And I'll be honest with you guys, this car looks a lot bigger than my i3. But my fiance agrees, my i3, we can get in and out of it so much easier, so much more room, it seems like, on the inside versus this. And the bolsters on these seats kill me. It, it really reminds me of my Corvette. Like, look how thick these bolsters are and how far they come up. Ooh. It's just, you're kind of like stuck in the seat and then you got to crawl out of it. And then you got this massive console in the middle. It just, there's so much going on in here. It makes the car small. And uh, I mean, I'm not a big guy, but I'm not a small guy either. So for me, this car is just, this is made for somebody that weighs like 145. This might be interesting, me getting in and out. You want to record it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Guys, we'll meet you over at the dealership so we can uh, find out what exactly happened to my BMW i3. All right. Well, we made it to Jackie Cooper BMW. What do you What do you think of the comfort level? Um. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your seats all the way back. All the way back and yeah. lean back. <laughs> How tall are you? Six five. Six five. Okay, so just a note: the three series may be a little bit short if you're a taller individual. Hey, I was saying, man, like I'm right at six foot, 
And I mean, as far as leg room goes, I'm fine with leg room. It's just the, it's just the, I can't even, it's the car is so small, I can't even really get you in. Like, it's just, it, it feels like it's supposed to be a sports car. The problem is it's not a sports car. It's not powerful. It's not super fast. It just feels, I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I've, I've had more comfort in a Trans Am, definitely. <laughs> So it's not just me. My fiance feels the same way. No offense, Jackie Cooper. I appreciate the car, though. I do appreciate the car, but I'm. This is not a car I would. I would ever buy. Maybe next time they can put us in a five series, and hell, maybe a maybe a seven series. Anyway, let's go see um, if they got us a new car or if we're picking up the uh, the same i3 we dropped off. Well, we're back. Let me tell you, it's been a day, man. I've recorded three different videos today. Worked on several cars, and. Uh, Man, I'll tell you what, today would have been a lot more difficult if it hadn't been for Michael coming out and giving me a hand. So even though he's not here, I want to give him a big shout out and thank you again to Michael for coming out and giving me a hand today. Uh, he was essential to getting everything done that I needed to get done. Um, so definitely go follow him over on Santa's Workshop. You won't regret it, I promise you that. So here it is. The BMW i3 is back. And she's better than ever. You can see I got that new uh, I got that new tag on her. Yep, that DTOM that don't tread on me tag is on. She looks good. Uh, well, she did. She's a little dirty now. They cleaned it up for me. Uh, big shout out and thank you to Jackie Cooper BMW for taking care of me, man. Uh, even though I I don't like the 330 at all. Uh, the customer service at Jackie Cooper was awesome. Of course, nothing sponsored, nothing's paid. This is just warranty work that I took the car in for. And, you know, it just so happens that having all the electronic gizmos that this car has, um, it bricked. Uh, they had an issue with it bricking the stereo right here. Well, I don't want to call it the stereo, but basically the, the whole interface on that screen died so the the whole thing had to be replaced they didn't have any available in the united states so we had to wait for one to come in on a ship from germany and it's here and it all works now so you can you can power the bad boy on bingo she's happy i drive is working accessories still active what is it it's it's running though right or no it's not running Okay, now it's running. Did I leave this thing sitting here on the whole time? Maybe I did. Maybe I did. I don't know. I have missed this car so much. I know a lot of you laugh at this car and, and like people just don't believe that I actually like this car. In fact, my own fiance doesn't want to believe it either. She's like, that is so not you. She's used to me being in these loud, you know, obnoxious, you know, you know, <laughs> she's used to me being in these loud cars and to see me in an electric vehicle. And she knows better than anybody because she's here every day. She knows that this is what I drive. This is my daily driver. Like, and switching back over to gas just sucked because gas is so expensive. Um, this car doesn't cost me really much of anything to drive. I have averaged it out over all the miles I've driven, which is quite a few, to about four cents a mile. This car costs me four cents a mile to drive. It only requires an oil change, I think. I think it's once every other year. Um, a cabin air filter, like once every other year. A brake flush every other year. Something like that. Something like that. It may be that it requires an oil change once a year. But either way, um, are we off? There we go. We're off. Either way, uh, and I'm pretty sure it's every other year, but even if it's once a year, like still, man, come on. Um, I had a lot of people saying that tires on these only last like 10,000 miles. Well, guys, I've put almost 5,000 miles on this car. Um, and I can tell you right now from experience, when I got the car, the car had practically new tires. Look at the tread on these. Uh, hell, can you even see the tread? Look at that. I mean, you can fit your whole damn finger in there. Um, front tires are the same. No issues with tread life. Like, I don't know what they were talking about. The the BMW had horrible, horrible tire life, but the tire life on this is great. Brakes last pretty much forever because you're never really using them. It uses regenerative braking more than you're gonna be using your actual brake pads. Um, 
it's pretty much a car that requires almost no maintenance and unless you're driving exceptionally long distances like i did to california and back you don't even need gas out here guys so you know i can't say enough good things about the i3 even though it may not be uh, the typical car most of you are used to seeing me drive it is one of my favorite cars you know we obviously have the 2020 jeep wrangler over here i mean i love the jeep it does what it's supposed to do four by four snow ice great for that stuff the i3 it's great for giving me all the mileage deductions um, that a gas car does except i don't have to pay for gas so it costs me a lot less to use and i still get the same mileage deduction and the car was only 19995 so i mean the car was dirt cheap and then you've got the Ram 2500. I just, if for some of those people that may be clicking on this video and you've never seen me before, they may think, oh, he's a, he's an EV guy. He's one of those. No, nah, man. No, I've got a Cummins right here, man. Brand new. To what was brand new when I bought it. 2019. I bought it at the end of 2019, I believe. Or maybe at the beginning of 2020. I don't remember. But it's a, it was brand new when I bought it. Had no miles on it. Ram 2500 with the Cummins turbo diesel. All right, so I, I got a big boy diesel truck right here too, guys. <laughs> I do. So listen, you know, Cummins, man, no joke. I got a, I got a Cummins turbo diesel. I got an electric car and I got a four by four Jeep sitting right there too. I've also got a, a 2021 Harley Davidson. Um, I almost said Sportster. I traded in the Sportster on the Road King. And then just to kind of update you on some other things here, here's the, uh, the Plymouth Colt. Ooh, let me, uh, can I wipe that lens? Windshield wiper time that better <laughs> we got the Plymouth Colt we've got the uh the Ford Tempo man she came out so sick I mean I'm just I'm just blown away on this one guys uh for $465 paint job and I think I only paid like $250 for this car <laughs> cold air conditioning runs and drives great then we got the uh, the Nissan hard body. Hell, by the time this video comes out, I don't know, all of these cars will probably already be at auction. Uh, in uh, three days, for me, in three days, this goes down to the Autospot LLC to get that paint really cleaned up. And I think here in a minute, I'm going to put these hubcaps. I found the hubcaps I needed. I'm gonna go ahead and slap all four of these hubcaps on, make her look a little better. And then we got the Plymouth Colt, and again, I don't know when this video is coming out, but uh, definitely going to be taking the Plymouth Colt up to watch JR go in Kansas. So that ought to be, I'm, I'm nervous about that. That's a long drive for a car that's been sitting as long as this one has, but I think we're going to get there, guys. Lots of fun cars, lots of, you know, the thing is, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're an EV car guy, if you're a motorcycle guy, truck guy, Jeep, it, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't care. I love cars. I do. I love cars and I'm really getting into motorcycles and uh, pickup trucks. Like I just, I just, I love these things. They're so much fun for me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. I know there was a, a lot of speculation about the BMW i3 burning down, but you know, uh, the reality is it was in the shop when the shop caught fire. Okay. Uh, the air conditioning unit or the heating unit in the shop actually caught on fire so my car was in the shop and the shop did catch on fire but no my car did not get damaged my car was not burnt down to the ground or anything like that um so there you have it she's home she's safe all is right with the world if you're wondering why i've got all these cars in here well uh today's as you can see very wet but not only is it wet out here today um they're talking about some hail heading our way in the very near future, possibility of tornadoes. So um, you're probably sitting there going, but you left your nice cars outside. Yeah, yeah, the nice cars have full coverage insurance, guys. <laughs> these, uh, these little ones, which believe it or not, these little ones are my livelihood. These little clunkers in here are my livelihood. I need these things to get to auction in good shape. They're not full coverage. So if hail or, or whatever, tree limbs, if anything damages these or destroys them, I am out all of that money and it may not look like much, but I can guarantee you there's at least, golly, let's add it up. At a minimum, the hard body should bring 15. Like Adam, I mean, let's put it, let's be real with it. I paid 13 for this when it was rusted and it had no paint 
and the interior wasn't cleaned up. So this one realistically should bring two grand at least. This right here, I don't know how many people are gonna, gonna want a Ford Tempo. Hopefully this one goes for a thousand, but let's just low ball it and say 500, okay? So you got 2,500 in these two cars. We'll low ball this one, although I think this one's gonna do decent at auction, another 500. So there's three grand. I've already got a dealer in New York that's wanting this for three grand. So, you know, we're at $6,000 just from the car sitting here. The Tiburon is already at insurance auto auction. So that's gotta be at least another thousand. You know, so you're talking $8,000 in cars they may look like hoopties, but the reality of the situation is there's a bare minimum of seven, eight thousand dollars in vehicles. So I got to take care of them. I guess that is going to wrap up this video. So do me a favor, guys. If you enjoyed the content, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you enjoyed it. Drop those comments below. Don't forget you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all of that good stuff. Auto Auction Rebuilds, links below. And go subscribe to Michael, man. Santa's Workshop. Definitely go over there. Again, everything's down below, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking time out of your day to watch my content when I know there's a million other people out there you could be watching. Um, and with that, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Stay safe out there, everybody. The rain's picking up. I hope to catch you all very soon in the next one.